Hello, welcome back to uh, Having Fun Repairs. Uh, I mentioned this in a previous video that, uh, you know, when I did the uh, door switches in, in my car and everything, that I'd be uh, redoing the dash. I uh, ended up uh, buying a kit that allowed me to replace the dash and the vents. Now, I mentioned that uh, the, the early version of the MKV Jetta, the type of paint that they used on uh, our rubberized uh, coating that they use on all the interior interior um, dash and trim assembly uh, anytime you got like an oil based uh, substance on it like um, armor all it was peeling the paint off you could definitely see it on this vent over here so I had to stop using armor on the trim pieces uh, I would only use it on my dash but uh, you know this is getting to be a fairly old car and the uh, plastics have started to, to deteriorate and break down. I actually broke this when I was removing it to take a look at this passenger uh, uh, airbag indicator uh, and clean in context to determine what the issue is that. I actually have two problems with my car uh, right now other than this upholstery but one of them I, I am going to fix with a new uh, passenger airbag light. I'll probably save that for another video to be honest because I want to tear apart this one to show why it's failing. This video is going to consist of uh, removing the center console dash, um, the vents and replacing those. Uh, one thing that I'm going to have to do since I do have an aftermarket uh, uh, CD DVD player in this car to then uh, player is I mounted the microphone uh, made it part of the center dash console here uh, for placing phone calls over Bluetooth. Uh, be able to communicate and ever since I've done that you know it's worked fairly well but uh, whenever I talk to somebody uh, via telephone through my dash I guess because there's just too much noise uh, with it being inside of here that uh, my voice is often drowned out so I am going to find a new place to mount this um, I might reroute it and, and bring it in maybe to down here somewhere or maybe up into here I mean I not too sure yet. I think getting it closer will help out with clarity and then getting out the dash near the vent where there's a lot of noise whenever you're running the heater or the AC unit would be good. Um, so yeah, uh, this, now I bought a replacement from uh, ECS Tuning. It wasn't, it wasn't cheap, um, but we'll take a look at what, what I have in here. Now the, now, the color is different. I went for anthracite, which is why I went ahead and got the uh, replacement vents as well. But I've got the lower uh, lower center dash pieces that will go in. What else do we have? We have uh, the upper dash assembly and, and uh, AC vents. Uh, that will go in against anthracite. <laughs> Uh, and then both uh, front left and front right, uh, again, anthracite color, uh, AC uh, vents to st stick in and remove the old ones. And like I said, uh, there goes the right one or left one. I don't think it really matters much. And then a um, little passenger airbag light, um, which I'll make into a different video, that specific replacement. But anyhow, well, let's get busy doing a, a removal. When I broke it, taking it out, <laughs> mind you, like I said, it's plastic really old. It was already cracked in several spaces, so I knew that it wasn't going to come out uh, perfectly when when I tried to, uh, you know, clean the contacts on this to get this working. It, it does come out in pieces. Now, your car might be slightly different. You might have a cup holder, or uh, not a cup holder, but a uh, a change holder or a wallet holder up here versus a vent. I got a vent that I can open and close uh, to redirect air stuff out of here, up to here, uh, and against the windshield to help defrost it. Uh, but this, not the entire piece, only this comes out first. Uh, fairly easy to get out. I just say take your time of removing this. There's a, there's no screws associated with it, but it will. Uh, this is a piece that I'm going to have to save to reinstall, but it will uh, get off the cord. 
get you to right here where you should find a screw that you will have to remove. Uh, it's one screw out of a lot of screws, uh, three screws that will have to come out of here. But that is the first of the three screws. Now, I've left these out since uh, doing the replacement. I have all three screws sitting down here on uh, inside the shifter boot. But uh, with this one removed, you should be able to start uh, pulling out this assembly right here. Okay. Now, be very careful when you pull this out because you got tabs at the bottom. Uh, you see those tabs. Uh, so when you pull it out, you're going to want to come out towards your windshield and then you should be able to uh, remove it the rest of the way and doing the so exposes the last two screws that you'll find uh, one right here and then one right here let me get this out of the way ah, chunk it in the back seat and with those removed you should be able to start uh, taking this off now before you take off this top piece you notice that the uh, the bottom pieces you got this bottom piece as well. Well, looking at our replacement, take a second to look. You'll see that the bottom piece is going to have two screws. So obviously, this top piece uh, sits above it. Uh, so this bottom piece should be the last piece that we take off. And looking at this right here. Uh, you'll see that there are tabs at the bottom of this, which indicates these tabs right here in the corner. These more than likely slide down into there. So, like I said, you're going to, have to be very careful when removing removing this, so it's not to break the plastics. Now, you, have, you don't mind this being broken. Sounds so. You have tabs all aligned throughout here, which you should be able to very carefully not like me uh, pull on the plastics a bit and you should be able to get this free and then from there it's a matter of removing this assembly from inside here now I'm going to pause the video because I need to use both my hands to do this uh, safely without tearing up uh, the wires going to my to the, uh, CD player but uh, I'll come back once I have it uh, so I popped out the microphone and then you'll notice that you have uh, uh, two connectors down here, uh, one going to the warning hazard and one going to the passenger airbag indicator. We're going to have to disconnect these uh, connectors and remove those modules from this as well. Now when disconnecting the airbag module or the uh, indicator, it's fairly simple. You got two tabs on both sides that you press together and then you can slide this out. The hazard warning uh, button is a little bit different. You have a tab here that you have to pull back on. Uh, let's see if I can show you on camera. You have to pull back on this tab. You see it's just backwards. And then you should be able to remove the uh, wire connector after pulling back on that tab. So I'm going to do that now. Okay. Uh, this fully comes out just like that. You can see you got the uh, other plug for the airbag. Uh, you'll notice that there's this tab here. That tab was connected to this piece right here. Uh, one thing I also want to note is uh, see how the, there are these metal retaining clips that are on the plastic trim assembly here. Uh, depending on uh, what yours comes with, you should be able to remove those. Um, the replacement uh, upper assembly I have, they're built into the plastic. Uh, you can see the metal tabs there at the very bottom. So I would just say make sure that uh, you fully look over your replacement pieces uh, to know what you can and can't remove. And then that will expose our last two remaining bolts. Uh, this one right here is missing. It's been missing since I dremeled out this to make room for uh, running the microphone through here. Um, I might still have one that I can replace it with, um, so I need to find a fourth one, but we'll remove this screw and then should be able to remove this bottom uh, faceplate here. So give me a second and I'll grab a screw, a uh, torque spit, let you know what size and we'll remove that piece as well. Um, 
I pulled out the torch fit. Uh, this one has a security uh, uh, opening for the center in case if you actually have uh, screws with a little security uh, nub that's in there. It's basically prevents you from putting a regular torch fit in. This doesn't have it. Uh, this is a TR6. Fits rather snugly. And then you can just loosen the screw. Get it out of the way. And more plastic bits and pieces falling off, as I assumed it would. And we should be able to start removing this. Now, something I want to, you to take note of. And, and again, like I said, I was removing this before. Uh, you have metal retainers here on the side that uh, are glued in, epoxied in, as well as uh, compressed over some plastic tabs. Uh, all except for one actually broke off when I was removing this last. And you know, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I was doing things perfectly. I'd actually needed to reacquaint myself prior to removing this uh, previously to work on that uh, that uh, airbag warning lamp. Uh, which I didn't do. I blundered my way through it. Now I wasn't jerking this piece off. Uh, I will say that I was uh, gingerly taking this piece off, but they were still uh, breaking off on in here versus coming off. Like I said, this is, you know, this. I think this is a common issue with the uh, first year edition, if I can put it that way, of the Mark V uh, MKV. Um, whatever you want to call it, uh, Jetta 2.5 liter, the plastics in there, the paint in there. I think they were more out over time. But, so I'm gonna have to pull all these tabs off as well. And we should be able to get it ready for replacement. Ah, 26 year old me versus 36 year old me. Uh, I took out my aftermarket to the player as well. Um, because when I was driving, I hit a bump. Sometimes it shuts itself off. I just wanted to uh, go through and redo a lot of things I did in my 20s versus what I know now. You know, I use these standard uh, crimping style connectors for all the wires and stuff. You know, some of them I overly crimped to get the wires to stay in and you know have some exposed metals and wires and everything. What I like to do is uh, is redo all this as well, and it's just jumbled up, shoved way in the back as best as possible. I'm actually going to take the time to zip tie this and do it pretty, and actually um, solder these wires together versus uh, just crimp them together, like I did with uh, this. Uh, so that way it should be a better mechanical uh, uh, connection. I will say this: uh, don't ever try it when you have an aftermarket player. Uh, when you're looking at putting it into a uh, uh, you know standard uh, connector or whatever from whatever the vehicle came with, uh, you know sometimes you can get by with uh, wiring wires to wires without uh, specific things, but not so much with Volkswagen new modern cars because of their CAN and bus interfaces. You need to make sure that uh, you have a right, the right type of interface uh, assembly. Uh, to go between those points and it does make the job uh, quite a bit wee easier uh, and then you're not throwing codes or anything like that because of uh, how you connected the thing in so at least when I was younger I was smart enough to do a bit of research uh, and got the right type of uh, uh, interface for my car all right uh, if you notice this uh, it's gotten very dark super late it's taking me a while to uh, move on. Uh, I got everything soldered up in this wiring harness uh, and zip tied so it's a lot prettier now should fit in a lot better. Then I rerouted the microphone uh, to here. I'm not too happy with this because I didn't get it flush. I didn't get this opening quite big enough. Uh, forgive this a little bit of lubricant that I was using. I need to get it cleaned up. But, uh, head on, I mean, the microphone's now sitting in a place where my voice is actually hitting versus the center. 
Uh, this is cushioned, so it might be better. But again, this wasn't about rerouting a microphone or anything. And you know, this is my car is fully paid for, and it's super old, so I don't really care too much about that. But uh, now that I've got this all hooked up, I can go ahead and hook the microphone in, put pretty up the cables. I'll get the tuned-in CD player back in, and then we'll start uh, putting the center console and, and uh, AC vents back together. We're going to start with the bottom piece of the center console first and pop that in. Everything is pretty much in reverse of how it went into the car. Uh, let me see if I can turn this off. See, it's reflecting the light pretty bad, but everything will pop on pretty easily. So, hold on one second. Okay, so, what I'm doing to make this process easier is I'm starting at the bottom. And then working those tabs in, going all the way to the top. I'm not going to try to get put an overabundance of pressure on it, just enough to get everything worked back into the spot. I'm fully seated in. that back in now I can begin returning these two screws all right before I can install the top piece I am going to need to hook back or push back in the hazard lamp and the passenger airbag warning light since I'm replacing it, it's going to be fairly easy. I'll just need to fit this piece into here and then plug that uh, wire back in. Should be pretty easy to do. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that and then get right back. Okay. So I've gotten that, those pressed back in. Now I'm going to start with these bottom tabs and drop them into here on both sides. And then I should be able to rock this top piece into place. You're not going to use great force. You want to come at this uh, fairly easily. Actually, this piece has to go down here first and then you can swing this top piece on. Alright. Should be pretty simple. Alright, so I'm going to have to get a little bit of pressure with my hands to make sure that these retain tabs go in. That are right up underneath there. Thumbs touching one. And you got the other side. I should be able to get it to go in from that. Hold on a second. Okay, this piece back in. I can now replace uh, these two screws right here. Uh, this one's going to have to wait a minute, so I'm going to do that next. Okay, with those two screws now in, I can now put this guy back in and then the last screw up top. And it just this front end goes in first, where's two pegs are at, and that pops right on in. Pretty easy peasy. And now I need to get that screw in right back there. Now with that back in, and that screw tied down, it's as simple as popping this last piece back on. it in with two hands so give me a second uh, obviously it's daylight again it's getting a little too dark so I figured uh, a good time to call it stop and then, you know as I say nothing good happens after midnight uh, because I had been working on this and rewiring it you know got dark locally and uh, unfortunately I 
was leaving my interior lights on too long and then I couldn't start my car so uh, my wife was gracious enough to help me uh, push my car so I can jump start it off of hers and, and get the battery somewhat charged and finish replacing the uh, vents today um, <clears throat> so you can see now the uh, the center console the entire anthracite was uh, uh, dash center console has been replaced so we'll do the right and the left vent here in a minute um, now the vents themselves uh, there's no screws holding them in from what I can tell it looks like they are press fit with tabs on the left and right but they are angled so I believe that this one would be the uh, right vent and then the other one that come in a box came in a, in a plastic bag uh, now open and you can see here there goes uh, my old left vent I want to show you something now I got these from ECS tuning and taking a look at these there are some substantial differences what they sent me one the color doesn't match and two this looks like a worn replacement part not what I ordered look there's uh, damage on the top um, the rubber looks worn out on the wheel that opens and closes the valve that shuts off the vent and the part itself is physically dirty so what I what we'll do is we'll replace the right vent and I won't worry about doing the left until I get a replacement part and I've taken, taken photos of this and emailed ECS tuning and I'll see what they have to respond with um, now I've ordered small things from them in the past never once have ha ran into an issue like this uh, it did take them a while to ship the part after I ordered it. I, I did email them. Uh, obviously because of COVID they said there would be delays in shipment. And that's perfectly understandable. But uh, receiving the wrong item uh, should not happen. And so we'll see what they're willing to do as far as replacing it. If, uh, if I end up if it's a simple process, if they're very courteous. I'll throw some uh, uh, comment down in the doobly-doo in the uh, comment section stating as such. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a no-go for me. Um, you know, give them benefit of the doubt, see how they do, but that's definitely a no-go. Uh, this was a re relatively expensive kit. It wasn't cheap, and so sending a worn used part wrong color wrong thing in general I, uh, I don't think it's good business practice especially if you want repeat customers so that being said it looks like that what we need to do is to get something to slip into here I don't want to use a screwdriver because I don't want to screw up my dash uh, create damage on the side of my dash something thin to slide in here and then delicately uh, pry the vent out and we should be able to easily pop in the replacement so hold on a second I'm going to try to use some tools and uh, come back and show you what I've done all right so basically what I'm using is kind of like a spade or spatula type tool from this I fix it toolkit and it fits relatively simple uh, down between the edges uh, without having to, to apply too much force I tried to start on the right hand side getting this in and then using this other tool to start Crying at it. Um, and this side felt a little bit tighter than the other side, so I moved my way around here and, uh, you know, just inserted the this right here, where around about where those tabs were at, and then started to pull up from the corner with the other one. And this side came loose, and, um, you know, just going back over to here, this pry tool, uh, this side seems to have come loose as well. So, I will now work my way to the top and see if I can't get those loose through the same process and should be able to pull this out, slide this out from there. Okay, and that was a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. As soon as I moved this up to this upper edge, 
and I pried a little bit and this side popped out and now it's easily, easily, very easily come out and I can take this out of the way, grab the replacement one, uh, if you're looking for a part number on it, it's uh, 1 kilo 0 819 seems to be small debris in there and then we'll just slide this one in and see if it will press fit pretty easily we'll make sure I'm using the right side yeah so are they angled in the same way and unfortunately they're not so I thought the left side vent would be angled inwards but it is not it's actually angled outwards so that means that the one they sent me that was wrong is the actual right side vent a sticker covering the part number I wonder if it's the same part number And the same part number from the anthracite one, one kilo zero eight one nine seven. Ah, no, it's not seven one zero. It's the wrong part number. And that part number matches the original part number as well, seven one zero. So completely the wrong thing. So I guess what I'll do is I'll just, even though it's still the wrong part and doesn't have the paint coming up. I'll still pop that the bad replacement in here for now and uh, work my way over to the driver's side and put the right anthracite one in and see where they come back on as far as parts replacement. So if I have to pop this out and send it, send it back to them, no big deal. It's a relatively simple process. Uh, you can definitely tell that the paint material, um, at least their stock color replacement, very different from the paint on this. This has a uh, kind of like a rubber type fill to it. So uh, paint is uh, it's got a plastic base to it. Uh, this one's more has a less rubber fill to it. Obviously, still wrong part. So now I'll just repeat the process on the other side and uh, see why ECS comes back to me in email. I won't record that, but like I said, if uh, if uh, they email me back and they're like, "Yeah, we'll send you send you a box uh, once you receive it, just ship us back the part or something along those lines," then that's what I'll do. Um, and we'll see what they come back with. So hold on a second. I'll move to the driver's side and. Pop out the old and pop in the new. And again, same process. It seems like the inner portion is the easier way to start. Uh, get that worked out and popped off. And I'll uh, go to the top over here. See if I can't get it to come out as well. Uh, I think I have done this corner before going to do that one. see what happens. Now I'm going to move this pry a little bit and see what it does. type thing back in there. Let's see if that will help. Hey, easy peasy. Now with the old and in with the right part unlike the passenger side which was the wrong part. Okay. Easy easy easy. So now all that needs to happen is getting them to send the right part for that side. 
Now, I did uh, test this uh, microphone I put in, and uh, you know, it's just a, to be honest with you, what came with the Sony XAV 601 PT was a lapel mic. I mean, if you look at the lapel mic, you'll find the exact same thing. Although the 3.5 millimeter connector is at a 90 degree angle, I prefer to get one that is straight and something with better, higher fidelity. You know, like I mentioned, I'm not too happy with this not being set all the way in. So what I've done is I've uh, purchased a uh, 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 condenser style lapel mic uh, around the same dimensions and everything. Um, 3.5 millimeter jack on it is straight. It's still got great length on the cable, so I will come back and pull this out uh, once that comes in. Also got a backup camera that I can plug into here and wire up. Uh, might make a video just on that, reattacking this right here, getting this flush, getting the backup uh, camera installed so I can make use of that when driving uh, through this player uh, and showing that process. I think it'd be an interesting video. At least to me, because I like doing stuff like this. And I know a lot of people, or this is unsightly in my opinion, and a lot of people will probably be like, oh, you just drill, drill through your dash. Yeah, I did it, but it's also my car. This thing paid for it. I've had it for, uh, well, since it's 2000, halfway through 2005 model, about halfway through 2005 when the NKV came out. I bought this in early 2006, around January time frame. Uh, it's been paid for for many years, runs great, and haven't had m many issues with this car at all. So I've got no problem uh, doing something like drilling through my dash. Now, obviously, you got to think logically through things. You've got, uh, you know, your cluster panel that's, that's close by. You could have wires through there. Uh, you have airbags, right? So you don't want to put it anywhere um, where you you don't want to drill through your dash if you were to do something like this where you're going to chew up something that's going to uh, be a problem for your car. With having this removed, <clears throat> the reason why I knew that this right here was empty is because I could reach my hand into the very back and I could fill an open space. Um, and then what I did from there is uh, just inside here I drilled a small hole uh, inside the plastics with this removed and looked in and I could see that this was a hollow space. Um, although there was a plastic uh, cavity about half an inch inwards that blocks this from being able to reach in through that gap. So when I drilled, I had to drill through the, uh, this and the, uh, the plastic in behind it about half an inch uh, to an inch behind it to get into this open space that's through here. Um, but yeah, so there goes that. Um, I think we'll have uh, two two more videos coming up. Um, I'd like to tear apart the passenger airbag uh, thing to see why it's uh, intermittent, and not working all the time. Got rid of the code, uh, so now uh, to get rid of the actual airbag uh, light code, I had to use a uh, a special OBD2 tool uh, to scan it and get rid of it, but it hasn't came back on. And it's that light right there that sometimes turns on, sometimes on. This one's turning on just fine. So we'll have the video tearing that thing apart, destroying it, uh, seeing seeing why it's uh, try to figure out why it's not working. And come back and do a video on this and review the camera. Sorry for all the dinging. Uh, to make use of that function of this uh, Sony XAB uh, 601BT. I'm not really a repair video outside of the AC units, obviously, uh, and replacing an item. That's not really a repair. It's just replacing outright. But, uh, you know, this is an electronics channel, and a repair channel, home repairs, that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, at the minimum, I want to show stuff that you can do at your home that you might not have considered. Uh, obviously, I'm not a, an engineer. I'm an electronics technician. Uh, you know, do things at your own risk, you know, don't use this, any of these videos as specifically a how-to professionally get something done, but, uh, you know, if it helps you out and you like it, give it a thumbs up and, uh, and share it with your friends. Okay, thanks for joining. Take care. Bye.